In this video, we'll use Flow Designer to create a new flow that's triggered by an inbound email and updates a client record. This is very similar to the process used in the previous video where we use a scripted inbound action, but it's much easier to build and maintain. So please watch the previous video if you haven't already. Flow Designer is a great way to build automation into your process. We'll be using it a bit more in upcoming videos. Look for links in the description for additional resources to get more familiar with Flow Designer. We'll begin by navigating to Process Automation Flow Designer. From the new dropdown, we'll choose Flow. After providing a name and description, we'll click Submit. In the Trigger section, we'll choose Inbound Email down here. Like the previous video, we'll add a condition to only worry about the email where the subject starts with Client Update. There's no need to set the reply record type because we won't be receiving replies, only new messages. Also note that unlike inbound actions, there's no from field to restrict who the email is coming from. We could do that after the trigger with an if statement using the email records from address data pill. Let's save the trigger and create the first action. We'll begin by getting the client record based on the client ID in the subject. So let's use a lookup record action. We'll get a record where the client ID is, but we don't have the client ID available to us in any data pills, so we'll use the FX button and do a little scripting to pull the client ID out of the subject line using a standard string operation like index of, replace, and concatenation. Now that we have the proper record, we'll use an if statement to make sure the lookup operation was successful. If it was, We'll do an update record action using the client record data pill in the lookup record actions output. We'll set the comments field to the email body text, and that's that. Note that we chose body text instead of body. Body text is the text only representation of the email message, where body includes HTML and any styling and formatting. We don't need any extra processing for our simple message, so we choose body text. When we've got all those done, we'll save the flow. Here's something else we need to keep in mind. If we need to process any email attachments, we'll need to deal with them separately by navigating to ServiceNow Core Email. Unlike inbound actions that automatically attach any email attachments to the target record, email triggered flows do not. This provides some additional control. Check out the actions, look up email attachments, and move email attachments to record. We can also use the action associate record to email to update the incoming email record to tell it which target record was associated with it. Again, this is done automatically using scripted inbound actions, but separately here for flexibility, since some flows may generate multiple records or no records at all. Email headers can be accessed as a string from the data panel, but if we need to access a specific email header as a data pill, we can use the get email header action and specify which email header to use. Now we can test the flow using a previous incoming email. From the execution details, we see the lookup record found a record based on the client ID and did the update. And when we go to that client's record in the classic UI, we see the comments have been added with the incoming mail body text. When we're satisfied that our flow is running properly, we'll activate it so it runs automatically when triggered. Just like inbound email actions, email triggered flows are not as secure as other integration methods like web services, FTP, or JDBC, which require credentials. Another thing that's just like inbound actions is that you can use the processed email in the received inbox to diagnose if and how it was processed. The execution details on the flow make it easy to follow how the flow ran. Also note, if we have an inbound email action and an email triggered flow that use similar conditions in a target table, the flow will be triggered first and not process the inbound email action. Here's a key difference between inbound email action scripts and flows triggered by incoming email. By default, incoming email can trigger multiple inbound action scripts and will run until told to stop. 
These inbound actions are processed in the order according to the order field. On the other hand, flows triggered by an incoming email stop processing as soon as the first flow is triggered. If you want to change this behavior to continue processing, you'll need to set the order field and uncheck the stop processing field. These fields don't appear on the flow trigger by default since most of the time they aren't needed. If we want to see the order and stop processing fields on the inbound email trigger, set the system property glide.hub.flow.inbound under email under trigger dot show under advanced to true. Just remember, this is a system property and will affect all users. So don't do it unless it's absolutely necessary. A link has been provided with more information on this feature. That's it for processing inbound email with a flow. Again, consider using this method before a scripted inbound action to reduce technical debt.